Right guys, tip number one has to be location. It's got to be one of the most important ones as well. You know, at the end of the day, if the fish aren't there, you're not going to catch them. That's plain and simple. Right. So if you're after a specific type of fish, okay, do a bit of research. You know, try and find out as much as you can about that fish. Like where where they hang around. You know, bass, they're like more rocky areas. You know, flatfish, they, they prefer sandy areas. Pollock, weed. You know, you need to find out the localization of them. Also, things can come into play like, you know, what types of tides. Tides can have an effect massively on what sort of fish, you know, how well certain fish are going to feed. You know, types of, you know, time of the day, you know, especially with bass, I find, personally, that in the mornings on a nice early sunrise or late in the evening, just as the sun's going down into dark, the best ones for me. But you've got plenty of different options that you can research through to try and find out where and what they're going to do. So you're best off to try and get as much information on them as possible to find out where the general area is going to be and that's going to give you your best, best shot at trying to find the fish before you can do anything else. Right, so the tip number two is rigs. First of all, be confident in what you're using. You know, you want to really, really know that it's going to do the job. Don't make it overly complicated. Quite often, simple rigs will work well. You know, use something you used before, you're confident in, you know, you're happy fishing it with. But make sure you're using the right rig as well. You know, it's no good having a bit of bread and a size one over hook and trying to go for a mullet in a harbour. You know, more than likely, you're not going to pick up. And if you do, you know, probably going to foul hook them. So use what you're confident in, get the right rig for the right fish, and sometimes just keep it simple, you know? If it's simple and it works and you've used it a hundred times before, use it again. Okay guys, so tip number three has got to be bait. We're getting down to the hook end of things now. If you're targeting a specific fish, okay, you've got to find out what that fish feeds on. What food sources it has in its natural environment in its area. If you're finding you're hunting for bass, you know, they're gonna be coming in over the rocks, they're probably gonna be trying to feed on them for peeler crabs. If you're fishing for flatfish on the mud flats, you've got to find out whether that mud flat is more of a ragworm area or a lugworm area. Okay? So you've got to look at it like that. Secondly, you've got to look at presentation. Presentation and you cannot stress this enough. Presentation is key. That comes down to it. At the end of the day, if you've got an unnatural hook bait out there flapping around in the current looking like God knows what, you're not going to get a fish here, you're highly unlikely to. But if you, if you can pinpoint that, that, get that down, and you've got a flat, nice streamlined bait sat there pretty much on a plate from, it's, like, it's all but irresistible to them. You know, it's in their natural habitat. If you can match the, match the hatch, to, as they say, to what they're normally used to feeding on, why wouldn't they? That's the way you've got to look at it. Right, number four, the next tip is local knowledge. I can't stress enough how much local knowledge can really save you from blanking to catching. You know, down to speaking to local fishermen, tackle shops, whatever it is, get the local knowledge. You can find out what they've been feeding on, what they've been getting caught on, what fish are even in the area. Odd spots, do they like deep, do they like shallow, do they like mud flats, do they like rocks. You know, the time of evening, the time of morning, whatever it is, it can really, really be a saviour from blanking to catching. Don't be afraid to ask. Right, so tip number five is one of the most crucial ones as well. You know, these are the top five. Time and effort. You know, the more time and effort you put in, the more chance you've got of getting, getting that reward, you know, and everyone loves the reward, that's the, that's the reason we're there fishing, okay? Don't always go to the popular marks where everyone's fishing. They're high pressured, the fish are getting lines blown up all day, every day, you know? Try and try a new spot, try and find your own spot, have a look on Google Maps, take a visit, take a walk around the coast, try and find some little out of the way spots, because you never know what's going to be lurking in them, okay? Don't get put off by blanking as well. Blanking is just an opportunity to learn. You know, think about why you blanked. What, what went wrong for you to blank? 
I'm not saying that you did something wrong, but what wasn't in the right place for that not to happen? You know, was was were the fish not in the area? Was it not the right state of tide? Was it not a high enough tide? Was the weather wrong? You know, did you have were you in the wrong depth of water? There's a, a multitude of different things that you can think about to why it went wrong, and it's all a learning curve. You've got to put the effort in to be able to get that reward back. So as long as you can understand where you went wrong, you, you can learn and, and put, it, put it right next time. Okay, but you've got to also look at things like, you know, just do your research, find out different things, go visit them spots on, on the low tide, have a look around, scout round, you know, find out what gravel you'll be, fi what ground you'll be fishing over. If you're fishing over, you know, a sand patch, or where the sand patch goes into the rocky areas, you know, where it changes, if there's any deep, you know, like deep channels, find the deeper water, you know, if you find a little sand bar or something like that, go and have a look. You might find snags that you might want to avoid. It's all going to help you. Seeing it when there's no water there is all going to help you when you're fishing on a high tide. It's going to give you a massive edge. You're going to get an understanding for where the fish are going to be. Okay, just try and figure out the spot. Keep, put the time in. It doesn't have to be long sessions. You know, I'm not saying go up there and smash it for an eight hour session and try and find, you know, try and work it out in that eight hour session. You can do an hour here, hour there, scatter it out throughout the week, you know, after work. You know, we've all got lives, that's just the way it is. But if you put the time and effort in and work out, try different things. Obviously, like, like you said earlier, fish what you're confident in but there's no harm in trying something new. For example, me and Liam, we've been fishing a spot really quite hard since the beginning of the summer, um, and for at least the first 10 sessions, no, probably more, we were really scratching our heads because we were picking up the odd fish every now and then, you know, maximum one fish a session between us. You know, a lot of the times it was blanks. Um, we, could, we couldn't get ahead on why it wasn't working, why our normal strategy of how we go about fishing wasn't working. So we had to adapt uh, our approach the way we came at the venue and, and it does show that time, effort and change sometimes can be good and it will work because what, the way we are down there now is completely different. I was down there last night and I think I had five in a couple of hours. Um, We've had some prolific fish from there. Um, one which you will see at the end of this video, which really does prove that time and effort put into one venue really can give you the reward that you really want and dream of. Good. Right, before we show you the footage of Billy's capture, the amazing fish that he managed to catch, unfortunately, GoPro did die, so it's recording on our phone, but we still did get the footage and pictures. I want to say one, well done Billy, you know, we put a lot of time down there, you know, and I was happy, you know, we went from catching one fish between us, you know, mostly planking really, you know, then we, we, we got quite comfortable there, you know, we were about four or five fish in a session, catching quite regularly, a couple of hours, go down, get a couple of fish, come back, I pulled out what well, a good sized bass for me, I was happy with the size of it, for especially the stamp fish we pulled down there before. Billy put in the extra work. Even after I was happy and content of just going down there and catching what we were, he went down there over and over and over and changing and changing. You know, little things. I like fishing on the mud flap, so I found I got a few more bites that way. Billy banging a glowing bead, you know, we lifted up the bait just off the surface, let it flap around the current, and he got smashing it from it straight away. You know, it's a big difference. But you put in time and effort and trial and error, and yeah, you'll see the fish in a minute, but yeah, well done. Well done.
Nine pound. Nine pound three four. Nine pound three four. Nine pound three four. Bass. <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh, you've knocked me for a thing. Totally made up in you. Mate, honestly, words can't even describe. Hold them out a bit, Bill. So guys, that was my special capture and what a special capture it was. Nine pound, three, four ounce, you know what? I can still barely believe it myself, I guess. I just have to look back at the footage and pictures just to prove to myself that I wasn't proven. Um, but she swam back okay, um, what a monster she was. But I got in the water with her, um, I sat there and it gave her the time she needed to recover after the fight and you know I held her by a tail and she kicked off strong out of my hands and headed straight back for that deep channel. Um, what a fish. You know, I, can, I know that I'm probably never going to catch one like that again for sure but oh what a fish. It's, it's a privilege. Um, yeah that's all I can say. I'm just glad that she went back safely. She was pregnant. Um, and, you know, let her go to, you know, bring bring future future bass back to us to be caught another day. So, yeah, if you if you enjoyed the video, um, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more, then definitely hit that subscribe button because we're going to be uploading a lot more frequently. So, from Rosewood Fishing, we'll see you later.